Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Hope everybody's having a great week. First off, I have to give a super thanks to everybody who went to my Amazon wish list and got some stuff. Thank you so much, you rock. It's been like my birthday for the last two weeks, but actually tomorrow is my birthday, which is not a big deal other than the fact that I got a notification that something is coming in the mail on my birthday, which is super crazy timing, but it is, extremely exciting to me and I cannot wait to share it with each and every one of you because I couldn't have gotten this without you. And so in the next video, do not miss it because I am going to tell you about my 100,000 subscriber giveaway, which we are at 116,000 now. That was fast. Thank y'all. So don't miss it because you're going to want to find out all the details, how you can get in a drawing to win a super cool prize. So I got a doozy for y'all today. I have a customer's Echo CS590 Timberwolf chainsaw and it is going to be a massive $250 repair, all caused from one nail. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I'll reply to all the early commenters. Now the customer that brought this on is a commercial cutter. He has lots of Echo units, uses them on a daily basis, and he is the actual one that climbs up in the tree, so he gives a lot of these big saws to his other guys to work with while they're down on the ground. Now he brought the saw in thinking that it just wouldn't oil, which it wasn't oiling at all, and let me show you why. So when he brought it in, everything looked as it should. He does have a 24 inch bar on it. it did get hot at some point. Now, in my last video, we're talking about chainsaw oiling. See this blue hue right here that's not on the top as much as it is on the bottom. This is from it overheating. A lot of people thought that it comes with some kind of heat, you know, uh, tempered heat, metal. No, no, this does not happen unless the bar gets too hot. All chainsaws, when they're wearing, you know, evenly, the paint's coming off evenly, and it's been oiling correctly, they do not have this blue hue on the bottom of the bar. Now, when the chainsaw first came in, I didn't notice this until I took the side cover off and went back inspecting. But as you come around with the chainsaw teeth, check that out. It is completely missing a 3 8 full tooth. This thing had to hit something really hard to break an entire tooth off. Let's go ahead and remove this side cover and see what's going on behind here. Because my first assumption, as always, is check the bar, make sure that it's not clogged up, pull the bar and chain off, run it, make sure that it's oiling correctly out of its reservoir. But immediately when I took this one apart, you can see what's wrong. Where's the bearing? That's not good. Now the really bad part about this is this saw is only about seven months old and it's already had a $200 repair. The customer that bought it, like I said, uses it commercially and one of his guys put the wrong mix of gas in it and this was about two months ago. So he spent $200 just for me to put a new piston and cylinder in it two months ago. So let's take a look here and see what all is uh, destroyed. Now, I don't think that it hit the chain catcher. The chain would have had to have been really loose. And I made a previous video about always checking your chain catcher because it, over time, if it does start to go in the upward direction, it will hit your chain if your chain gets loose and destroy a brand new chain. So you always want to check your chain catcher. So let's check this sprocket here. We can tell it's just flopping around, which is not good. No bearing inside that. The bearing's completely gone. The clip and the washer that hold that on are completely gone. If you look at the clutch, part of it's already broken off. It's supposed to be squared like this on each side and it has a big chunk out of it, so it needs a new clutch. Now I've already removed this. It does not come off this easy, but Underneath we have our washer and what actually works the oiler as the sprocket and clutch turn, this collar here is connected to it, but its ends have broken off and it's connected usually to the worm gear that's down in here or what's left of it. 
this is this metal piece right here is part of the collar that is lodged into the side of the housing and cutting off the oil line. If you look down here, there's the other oil line where it goes to the bar and it's completely destroyed down there also. This thing is in bad shape. So we need an oiler, oil lines, collar, worm gear, uh, clutch, needle bearing, washer, clip. Ooh, that's a lot of parts. Now for future reference, when you hit a nail or a screw or something like that, you're gonna know it happened. You need to stop, take your side cover off, check everything because pretty much what happened to this one when it did do that, nobody stopped. It might've loosened the chain a little bit. They obviously tightened the chain back up, went balls to the walls, and it just destroyed everything as it ran because when it rips the chain like that, it can either break your bearing inside from all that pressure and the bearing just fall out, your sprocket goes flopping around, and everything is out of alignment and just destroying it as you're using it. So the customer wants to fix it. I got all the parts in. Let's start tearing it apart. First thing I'm going to do so I don't make too much of a mess is empty out all the bar oil that's still left inside. When I flipped it over on its side, the worm gear did come out. and You can see where it got battered on the edges too, so it's no good. So before I clean all this up, we're going to remove the oiler and the side plate here. That way we don't have anything holding the dirt in. Um, you'll just bend that prong up and this whole side plate will come off. This is the oil line coming here. We're going to use our T27 to remove the two screws that are holding the oiler. piece out of there. I don't even know where the other piece is. Oh, that piece is stuck. There it is. Ugh. Let's remove these lines. That one is completely gone. I don't have the best pliers to get in there. Oh, come on. Hole. Yeah, and it broke off. So we got our screws, and so we have to replace both oil lines because they both broke. So this one looks like it's going to be pretty easy to take out. It just goes in like that. So that's a simple one. This one goes into the oil tank. So we're gonna to have to go into the oil tank and probably pull it through. So I just figured out something really cool. I haven't actually had to change out one of the oil lines going to the tank on a CS590 yet. So this is actually a first time for me. I turned the lights off so you can see this picture better, but I got my endoscope out because I can get in there and show you better. If you wanna get one of these endoscopes, they're super cool to play with. I will leave a link in the description box below, but let me get you up here, okay. I'm going in and if you could see, that's where the line comes in and then it goes all the way up the tank and all the way back down to the bottom and to the filter. That is like probably eight inches of line. I can definitely just pull that through the other side, cut the bad section off and roll with it. All right, so I was able to pull the line out some and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off a good chunk of everything that got too hot. I mean, it, it actually got so hot that it hardened, melted and hardened the end of that plastic. So I can't think I can connect that to the new oiler just fine. So I'm gonna stick the pipe that channels it to the bar right through here. It just presses back down into its little slot perfectly like that. Get under here, let me check this washer, make sure it's okay. Seems all right, we'll just put that one back on. It's covering the E-clip and the seal for the crankshaft. Now, one of the most unfun part of 
putting it all back together with such a crammed space and putting the oiler back on the lines is I've got to put these two uh, retainer clips over the fuel line or over the oil lines as I'm putting it on to keep them in place. So maybe I can put it over my line first and bring it back over my inlet nipples. So I got both both of these clamps on there. I've got my new oiler here and it's going to go back on like this. So I want to stretch the ends of the lines just a little bit as I'm putting them on. That way it'll make it much easier to get it over those nipples. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the clamp up there as I'm pushing it in because I cannot get it over it. Doesn't wanna spread out now. Go in your hole. Go in your hole. So close. I think I almost got it. A little bit more. And we're clear. Whew. That was a toughie. Okay, next one. I hate doing these. Stretch out the end of my line. Bring the clip up to where it needs to go. And I know y'all can't see this very well, I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. The hard part is done. Got both oil lines back on with the clamps. Woo now that I've got the oiler back in place, I can put the two screws back in. Next, we're gonna put our worm gear back in. When you do, it has one side that has these little divots out. That side goes outwards because that's what the collar goes against. And when the clutch engages, it will turn the collar, which turns into the worm gear, which these threads run the actual oiler itself. So I'm going to put a little lube on the inside of this just because that goes at a very high rate of speed while it's down in here. Next, we're going to put our collar down and you can see those little divots that are in there fit with the collar like that. And this edge out here. You want to make sure that it's spinning freely as it goes around since we know that there was boogers in here we don't want it to get stuck on anything but it looks like it's spinning freely we will put our washer back on and our new clutch uh, when you take a clutch on or off it's it's backwards threads so we um, tighten backwards I'm going to stop the piston and I'm going to use my uh, clutch remover tool to tighten it down. Now that I've got my piston stopped, I can tighten the clutch. It's pressing on the uh, rewind. I'm gonna want to head, go ahead and take the rewind off just so it's not putting any resistance on this as I tighten it down. Okay, so I don't totally have to pry my rewind assembly off. I'm just loosening it up to where whenever I do tighten down the clutch, it's not putting any resistance on it because sometimes if you don't hit it right, it will. So let's go ahead and put that over here.
Now we know we got that on there good and tight. All right, we can put our side cover back on. You're gonna wanna push that prong down just a little bit just so it can have some resistance on the bar stud and not fall back off. It'll go down just like that. Make sure that that's in its position. I'm gonna grease my bearing. that in the center and we could put our sprocket back on now when we do it's got two indentions one on each side that go on that collar that spins it had the two legs sticking out so you're gonna have to look down there and make sure that you line it up correctly to where it will grab the legs just like that we're just going to Push that down into place. Next we can put our washer and clip on. I just set the clip like that. Hold on to it with one finger so it doesn't go wing on me. Pop it right back into place. Everything's spinning freely and we need to check and see if it oils. hope that you never run into this issue and have to fix it but if you do now you know how to do it all by yourself to save you time money and frustration in the future don't forget to be on the lookout for my next video when i'm going to give you details on how to enter for the 100,000 subscriber giveaway i am super excited to show you what is coming tomorrow on my birthday it is awesome and i could not have done it without each and every one of you thank you so much if you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find us at Chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Or find us at Instagram at The Real Chicanic. Thanks and have a great day.